All right, team. Here's the mini quiz. I'm going to go through it quickly, see how we do. Um, hopefully we do pretty good, you know, doing a good job is what I always like to do. All right, first situation, we got a circle going on. They tell us that AB is a diameter. That's a real big deal. Um, I like to use angles when possible. If I like, I, like I see an inscribed angle 15, boom, I'm immediately going to its arc, which would not be 15. An inscribed angle has one arc, and the arc is twice the angle. So I know that's 30 degrees. Um, not much else I can do with that. I have a 30 degree angle here though that opens up to the 30 I just got and this far side. So I can solve for that big far side, all of this. I'm going to call X. So that's an exterior angle, which means it has two arcs. You subtract the two arcs and divide by two. So X minus 30, will equal 60, so this is a 90 degree arc. And I know part of it's 20, so that means that the other part is gonna be 70. Um, there we go, so that part would be 70. Now that really opens things up, because remember that AB is a diameter, so if that's 70, this has to be 110. And if that's 30 and 20, then this has to be 130. So I have every arc. So I should have a way to get every angle in the picture. Um, so I'm gonna use this, it's just figuring out what, what kind of angle they are and which arcs they use. So once I have all the arcs, I just go to each angle and start figuring it out. Angle, or, uh, angle A here opens up to 70 degrees, so it'll be 35, half of 70. B opens up to 70 and 30. Remember B is an interior angle which means it's the arc in front of it, 70, plus the arc behind it, 30, um, divided by 2 would be 50. So this is a 50-degree spot. Um, angle D down here. Angle D is a little bit weird for some people. Some people would miss this. D goes all the way to A and to that spot. That means D's arc is all of that, 130 plus 30. So the arc that goes with angle D is 130 degrees. Divided by two, that's gonna be 65 degrees. No, sorry, it's not 130, what I just say? It's 130 plus 30, so I just did the same mistake students make. It's 130 plus 30, which is 160, divided by two, gonna make that 80 degrees. Um, e, similar situation, E opens up to B, and to this spot, that means all of this goes with E. That's 70 plus 30 is 100. That's going to be 210 divided by 2. 210 divided by 2. It's going to be 105. And then C, um, angle C here opens up to 130 plus 20. That's 150. That's going to be 75. So that's all of our numbers we need. We need 75, 35, 50, 80, 105. That's all of them. There's more than one way to do that, by the way. That's just the way I saw it. Number two here, we have a tangent. So x plus 2 squared, you square it out, has to equal outside x minus 4 times total. The entire thing would be 4x minus 7 if you added that all together. x plus 3x is 4x, negative 4, negative 3 is minus 7. We talked about how to square stuff out. It's the first thing squared, twice the middle, the last thing squared, equals, now we have to distribute this out, that's going to be 4x squared minus 7 minus 16 is minus 23x. And then we have plus... 28. Get everything on the same side. That would be 3x squared minus 27x plus 24. That would be 3x squared minus 4 would be minus 27x. Minus 4 would be 24. Okay. And then that equals 0. Divide everything by 3. Please, if you can, divide off that GCF. 
So that'd be x squared divided by 3 would be 9x divided by 3 would be 8. It's a single, the first number is 1, so it's 1 times 8 is 8. What factors of 8 add to equal 9? It's going to be 8 and 1. But they have to add up to negative 9, so it's going to be x minus 8 and x minus 1. So x equals 8 and x equals 1. So we test those out. What would happen right here if I plugged in 1 for x? Ooh. How about here? Ooh, 1 minus little. How about 8? Does 8 work everywhere? Yeah, 8's looking great. But that 1 is no good. x equals 8 is the only number that works. Solve for x. Outside times total. 3 is the outside. Times x plus 5 would be the total, right? x plus 2 plus 3 equals outside 4 times the total would be 4 plus 2 would be 6. Um, I've told you guys, really good algebra students are going to divide first. Divide both sides by 3. Cancels out. 6 divided by 3 is 2. Then you have x plus 5 equals 8. So x equals 3. Crushed it. Chord, chord. Part times part equals part times part. This one looks like some big numbers coming at us. That's okay. 5x plus 7 times x plus 4 equals 10x plus 10 times 5x minus 2. Oh, yeah, big numbers coming at us. Um, Got to just distribute it out. This would be 5x squared plus 20 plus 7 would be plus 27x plus 28 equals 50x. That would be minus 20 plus 50. So plus 30x and then minus 20. I want my x to stay positive, so minus 5 would be 45x, minus 27 would be 3x, minus 28 would be minus 48. So I subtracted everything over there. Um, I can divide everything by 3, so that would give me 15x plus x minus 16. And then 15 times 16 would be 225 plus 15 would be 240. So it's the factors of 240. They need to subtract to equal 1. Guys, look out, look out. The numbers we just multiplied subtract to equal 1. So it's going to be those. It's going to be 16 minus 15 equals a positive 1. So we need to figure out how we do that. Well, it might be 15x and 1. Would that get us there? Does 15x go in? Yeah. Put a minus 1 over here, right? 15 times minus 1 would give me my negative 15. And then 1 times 16 would give me my plus 16. So it's going to be 15x plus 16 and x minus 1. That means that x equals negative 16 over 15 and x equals 1. Now, could x be a negative number? Well, I'm looking right here. 5 times a negative number minus 2. That's not going to cut it. That won't work. 5 times a negative number minus 2, not going to work. That will be negative. So this negative number is out. So x equals 1 is going to be the only number that survives. If a, b equals that, and a, c equals that, two tangents, they have to just be equal to each other. Negative 2x squared minus 3x plus 10 equals 8x squared minus 10x plus 4. We could square them both, but then we just have to square root them both. Remember that two tangents are the same size. I want my x squared positive. That's going to be 10x squared. Add 3 would be minus 7x. Subtract 10 would be minus 6. Equals 0. 10 times 6 is 60. They need to subtract to equal 7. That's going to be 12 and 5. And I need negative 12, 5 minus 12. So let's think about our factors that would work here. Well, 10 does not go into 12, and 10 does not go into 5. So that's out. So it has to be 5x and 2x. 5 times positive 1. 2 times negative 6. So x equals positive 6 fifths and negative 1 half. And we want the length of a, b. So let's see if they both work. I'm going to take 6 fifths. 
and I'm going to plug it in for x. So negative 2 times 6 fifths squared minus 3 times 6 fifths plus 10. And I'm going to go ahead and plug it into the other one just to make sure that I got the right answer. And it looks like I did. AB might be 88 over 25. Comma, I'm going to plug in negative 1 half now. See if it works. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Um, when I plug in negative 1 half, it sure does work, and I get 11. So they both work. I need both answers. Uh, solve for y if a, b, c, d is an inscribed quadrilateral. Well, if it's an inscribed quadrilateral, then opposite angles have to add up to 180. Those both have an x in it. We can do this. That would be 8x plus 16 plus 10x plus 20 equals 180. Opposite angles of an inscribed quadrilateral add up to 180. It's on your note sheet. 18x plus 36 equals 180. 18x equals 144. X equals 8. Well, that's X. So if I go and plug that in here, 5 times 8 would be 40 plus 80. That's 120, which means this corner has to be 60. So y plus 10 has to equal 60. y has to equal 50. Opposite corners have to add up to 180. That includes b and d. Find the intersections if y equals blah, blah, blah. Okay, so I'm going to take negative x minus 8 and plug it in to y. So that's negative x minus 8 plus 3. That's negative x minus 5. And don't forget we have x plus 7 squared as well. So that would be x squared plus 14x plus 49. This would be x squared plus 10x plus 25, and that would equal 100. Clean it up. That's 2x squared plus 24x, 49 plus 25, and then I need to, I need to subtract the 100 over, minus 100. I get minus 26. Divide everything by 2, x squared plus 12x minus 13, and I get x plus 13 and x minus 1. So x equals negative 13 and positive 1. I need two coordinates, 1 comma something and negative 13 comma something. I'm going to plug them in here. Um, negative 1 Minus 8 would be negative 9. So if I plug in 1, I get negative 9. And negative, negative 13 minus 8 would be positive 13 minus 8, which would be 5. All right. That's all she wrote.